All right, everyone wants to always know about what's next. Uh, obviously, in the, inside the octagon, you said, hey, you know, Cheeto, I want to make that right. Is, is that still where you are? I know afterwards you said, hey, Cheeto, you know, sort of watch your mouth or I'll fight somebody else. Where are you at right now, Sean? And who do you want next as we sit here and talk? Yeah, and I was serious about that. Cheeto was acting like he he earned a title shot. He's acting like he's, he's I think he even tweeted that he was the most exciting bantamweight, which is just bonkers. I don't even know where he's, you know, I don't know how he sees that but yeah no he, he needs to settle down a little bit because i do have options you know henry i pretend like that's an option realistically it's not he lost his last fight um alexander alexander pantosia the 25 pound champ throwing my name out there a little bit that's an option um you know marab's an option i might just wait for Corey if cheetah's gonna mm. act like he earned a title shot instead of saying you know what, Sugar? Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I didn't deserve it. I don't. Earn, I didn't earn it. But I appreciate you giving me that. If he, if he came up, you know, came at it like that, yeah. You know, I would, I would think about it more. But the fact that he's tweeting like, you know, I earned that and stuff. It's like, ew, throwing me off a little bit. So I got options. I'm not too worried about it. December is a nice time frame for me, depending on, you know, I have this muscle strain injury that I'm dealing with. I, re- I think you know, a couple more weeks of not doing anything might heal up my hand right here from bouncing it off his head wow is sore sore yeah. to finish um, yeah so that's, that's a little sore um, so I'm just a little little bruised up a little beat up mostly from camp rather but uh, yeah December could be a good time frame give it a couple more weeks and see how, how I feel getting back to training and but it also UFC, I know UFC has plans. They might already right. have a main event booked and, you know, they don't, they don't, I'm not a co-main event kind of guy. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't, Especially I wouldn't not take now. Dis- I wouldn't take it as a disrespect. You know, there's some other, you know, they usually have the bigger, cha- you know, 170, 155 would be right. champion over the 135. Right. Who knows? I know they've done that. You know, Connor's kind of did that before. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they want me to main event my own show, which is cool too. Maybe January, so. We'll see. It really just depends on how my body's feeling and what UFC's plan is. I'm going to go to Vegas here soon and talk uh, talk with them. Our next goal is just to, like I said, be undeniable. Be undeniable. Whoa. Whenever, whoever, be undeniable, man. I uh, keep reminding these cats. People keep falling. People keep forgetting. I'm only turning, I'm only turning 32 in December. <laughs> 32 guys i've been i've been with you guys since i was a little baby so that's gonna be guys getting sick of me but i ain't going nowhere for a long time get used to it max you've been fighting since forever and you're only 31 years old so do you feel like you're going through a second peak in your life you know in fighting career 100 percent, 100 percent. uh they say they say your best years is in like your mid-30s like you don't really get grown man strength or whatever to the mid-30s so I feel good, you know. I feel great, you know. I, I, like I said, I want I want to win the title back. I want to defend it a bunch of times, and after we do that, maybe even go up go up a weight or, or or two to get more titles. So we we'll see what happens, you know. Anything's possible. All I gotta do is uh, focus, you know, keep one foot in front of the other, and uh, keep grinding. You said you're the best boxer in the UFC, right? Uh huh. Would you ever consider taking a boxing fight? Now I would box whoever. <laughs> Whoever wants Global to box, ball. Dana White, tell them somebody, some, I don't, I'll box whoever you want to box. Boxing is more easy. I don't have to worry about kick, an elbow, a, like a takedown, brother. Like we're good. You know what I mean? Most of my head, most of my boxing movement right now is like, is, it's hard to do. Cause even with zombie, I was like, brother, I'm not gonna, like he was setting me up for, I felt like a knee or something. I was like, bro, I'm not going to duck my head here. You're going to hit me with a knee, you know? So a boxing fight, 100%. Max, would you consider fighting Aljo if he go up to featherweight? Uh, you know, I'm not a matchmaker, man. It is what it is. If if the undeniable arc is uh, is going that way, then it's going that way. But I'm not here to call nobody out. I'm not here to ask for no fights. I'm just here to have a good time and uh, make some money. So whatever whatever way it goes, it goes.
do you actually get him fired up to the point where he's like talking trash to you? And listen, I like Neil. Neil's a super nice guy. Like Neil is like one step below like Stephen Wonderboy Thomas as far as like just nice dudes who like never get involved in anything controversial. And yet somehow you have him shouting at you during the fight. You have him like flipping out during the press. Like. Listen, this that I'm not I'm not making light of the situation because I know it was something. No, no, I, I get where you're coming from. <laughs> How do I turn a nice guy into the bad guy? I don't believe I turn the nice guy into anything. I think I expose him for what he is. Neil said the words he said in that press conference. The words that I used as ammunition came out of his own belt. His words were, "I'm going to beat that. I, I'm a father." And I've, I've been accustomed to giving that beating and I'm going to give me and Gary the same beating. You don't say something like that. I've just had a little boy. I'm, an, I'm a father. I am, I'm a protector now. I have a life that I need to look after and care for for the rest of my, my existence. And when I hear a grown man sit there and say that he's got accustomed to whooping that ass or that kind of ass whooping and he's sat at home with a three-year-old Neil, so you just put yourself in. I'm going to absolutely sit there and hound you about that because it's your words, your own actions. I'm just putting them out there for the world in a different way. I'm just saying it as his words were. And the truth is that that whole subject should not be taken lightly. I called everybody out at the press conference at the end and said, I don't know how any, any one of you didn't pick up on that. I don't know how anyone didn't bring more light to that. At the end of the day, when I stood in that octagon, I had talked to talk, I had exposed him for what he was, which is a fucking piece of shit. And then I went in there, and this guy in that octagon is a dangerous man. He is the most wins in welterweight for a reason. And I showed, with emotion, I fought with emotion. I absolutely put on a clinic, because you cannot say stuff like that in this world and get away with it. And that was, that was justice for me. I mean, I was willing to fight the JDMs, the Ian Garys, the Shubcots, but then you got the guy, the number one contender, the former UFC champ, one of the greatest fighters, called me out. And this was a guy I thought I would face one day and, and never did. And I think he was thinking the same thing. And I was just like, let's make this fight happen. Are you kidding me? You know, I've been fighting backwards since Tyron Woodley, apart from Gilbert Burns, to be honest with you. You know, I've been fighting back. I've been fighting those 13s, you know, the, the Jeff Neals, the Vicente Luques, the Bilal Mohammeds, and, you know, try to get that fight with Michelle Pajeda, who I think was 15 or 13, I don't remember. But giving these guys a shot. I want to show the UFC, and not just the UFC, but the fans, that, you know, I'm not a gatekeeper. I am not a gatekeeper. I got a small window to kind of do what I want to do with the fight game. I'm 40 years old, and when I see a chance to go for another title shot before it's over, when Kamara Usman calls me out, I'm like, dude, no brainer. No brainer. I mean, yes, Gilbert Burns beat me. Yes, Bilal Muhammad beat me. But they actually, I never faced a guy that beat me the way that they beat me before. So I learned a lot from those two fights and been working on it ever since. And this is my opportunity to show the UFC and the fans and fighters out there that I got what it takes to go for that title again. That I got what it takes to face those guys in the top five, in the top three, the number one contender that I can fight for the title again. And it's just an opportunity to face a guy that I've been wanting to fight for a while now. Obviously, Leon Edwards. When I beat Kamara Usman, that's my plan. That's who I want.